Name the structure of the human digestive system, which is, and we have one, two, and three different parts of this question. So this total, uh, some of these questions will be worth three points. The first one is, which one is involved in digestion of proteins in acid conditions? And it's the stomach, because the acid is a great giveaway. Now, where does the most absorption of water to prevent dehydration occur? Well, that's in the large intestine at the very end of the gastrointestinal tract. And the final one is where the absorption of nutrients are. And that's the small intestine itself. Now we're going to move on to the next part. Explain how the structure of veins is adapted to adapted to their function. I'm going to talk about three main points. Firstly is that uh, they have a thin wall because they have a relatively low pressure of blood inside them. Remember the blood is returning from the body and traveling back to the heart so the main forceful action or pumping action of the heart has already been used up as it goes out from the heart to the arteries. Second one is that they have valves, which prevents backflow of blood. Because the pressure of inside the vein lumen is so small, um, it, they tend to go backwards if it wasn't for these valves. And that can happen in varicose veins. The final point I'm going to talk about is the fact that they're situated uh, right next to skeletal muscles. So as you walk, for example, the contraction of the muscles actually helps the, uh, the blood within the vein be pumped back to the heart. And this is once again due to the low pressure um, inside the vein itself. The next question is a two mark question, but I'm going to write um, quite a few more points and feel free to pick and choose which points you'd like in order to get the maximum number of marks. Outline how some of these, uh, these cells uh, ingest pathogens in the blood and in body tissues. First point I'm going to talk about is which cells ingest pathogens and it's the white blood cells and they ingest it via a process called phagocytosis. Phagocytosis is a form of endocytosis. It's where you grab the pathogen and you wrap it around your you wrap it around with your cell membrane and you engulf it inside a vesicle. The first step which happens is that the pathogen and the white blood cell need to be in close proximity to each other. You can't phagocytose something which is too far away. So the first point I'm going to write is that the white blood cell approaches the pathogen. The next thing that happens is that the cell membrane kind of uh, goes around the pathogen and engulfs it. And then this goes to form a vesicle. The final thing that happens is that once the pathogen is within the vesicle, inside the white blood cell itself, it's still alive, so you need to destroy it. And in order to destroy it, you combine it with a lysosome. A lysosome contains many enzymes as well as acids, which breaks down the target molecule within that um, vesicle. And that's how the process occurs.